I don't think there is anybody who wants to face what is coming. You know what's bothering me? I keep hearing people say that these earth changes are due to the government's definition of climate change. When everything that is happening is happening mighty fast. You know, I did a presentation on CO2 some time ago, so there is no point going down that same road. I'm really not interested in their explanations as much as I am in what policies they want to burden us with. Do you guys know what future faking is? It's more of a modern day term that is used to describe the act of giving someone a sense of false hope. For example, people in relationships will make plans for the future together. Everybody has done that. It can actually be a quite destructive habit, actually. Sometimes a person will make those plans even though they have doubts or are on their way out as to not perturb the other person or cause concern or panic. It's reassuring, you see, but it's false. And this is exactly what our controllers are doing to us. They future fake on a mass level. They tell you, yes, we have a problem and this is the cause. And this is what we need to do to fix it. And this is what things will look like in 20 years once we start doing this and that. But the reality is we don't have 20 years. We don't even have 10 years. Everything is falling apart now. Do you see, folks? That is future faking. Everything is collapsing now. But they want you to believe that we still have a lot more time left. The signs are there, and if you ignore them, you cannot prepare. And one of the greatest signs I should make aware is when you see that they no longer care. What I mean by governments no longer caring is that they will just start doing things that you and I know don't make any sense because they are so preoccupied with saving themselves, they will just feed us anything to keep us occupied. And you will see them getting sloppy. Well, they are not getting sloppy. They are just being preoccupied by something that is coming. So it's like they are being cheap. We are living in a mass delusional state right now. Forget The Matrix. Forget that movie. Well, maybe after the next one is released, but after that, forget it. There is no need for a Matrix. They have already proven that they can keep everybody in a trance without it. I know there are people right now, some of you, who are still wondering when this COVID thing is all going to end. It's not. The most it's going to do as far as go anywhere is it will evolve into something else. A new situation that calls for the regulations we are all putting in place now. And then some. You know, years ago, we used to hear about the New World Order. And their plans for a one world government. And one world currency. Remember that? What is crypto? See, you and I can't stop what's coming simply because we know that it's coming. So it seems that this year and last year, there have been a lot of breakthroughs in space science. This is the first time we've done this. This is the first time we've done that. They flew a helicopter on Mars, something that we didn't think was supposed to be possible only just a few years ago and now... For the first time ever, a NASA spacecraft has touched the sun. The Parker Solar Probe reached the sun's upper atmosphere, gathering data along the way to help scientists better understand the center of our solar system. You guys got this memo, right? I mean, what planet is this? 
What star system is this? I know flat earthers are having a field day with this one. Am I crazy? Or isn't the sun hot? First of all, how do you test a craft that is going to be exposed to temperatures that can exceed well over 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit without igniting a nuclear explosion? Not to mention all the other radiation that comes with it, x-rays, gamma rays, and wait. It spent its time in the outer atmosphere, or the corona, which I believe can get over 1.8 million degrees Fahrenheit. How do you keep the probe from breaking down atomically? Oh, they ran simulations. Whatever, get out of here. Let's hear what they have to say. Since the Parker Solar Probe launched in 2018, it's been orbiting the sun and inching closer with every loop. On April 28th, the probe finally crossed into the outer atmosphere and stayed there for about five hours. Alexandra Witz reports for Nature. The probe crossed the Alvin critical surface, which is the boundary between the end of the sun's atmosphere and the start of solar winds, which are streams of charged particles that radiate from the corona and carry a magnetic field. Researchers at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics built and monitor a key instrument on the spacecraft called the Solar Probe Cup, which collects particles from the sun's atmosphere. Per a CFA press release, the Solar Probe's Cup's data shows that the Parker Solar Probe dipped into the corona three times on April 28th at one point staying in the outer atmosphere for approximately five hours. To resist the sun's intense temperatures, the device is made of heat-tolerant chemicals like tungsten, niobium, molybdenum, and sapphire. First of all, let me show you this thing. Look, this whole thing is sunproof. This this was orbiting the sun for some time before it finally hit the corona and stayed there in the corona of a star for five hours. Now, part of the idea here is that this shield provides shade for the rest of the unit, you know, because of the massive difference between temperatures in the shade and in direct sunlight in space. At this distance, I still do not see how this works. Last time I checked, the sun is pretty big. With the mass of the sun and the mass of this tiny spacecraft, how is this thing not consumed and overpowered by the sun's pull? Keep in mind, this is their first time, remember? So they just best guessed their way to success. You can't tell me that this ceramic carbon shielding is making all the difference. What are the solar array wings made of? And the rest of it, for that matter. There are too many obstacles. How does this work? I imagine this thing just being obliterated just by the forces alone as it makes its swing around the sun. Why is this not front page and discussed everywhere? By the way, before I go further into this, let me show you something you may find interesting. More than 1.1 million names will head to the sun with Parker Solar Probe. NASA's Parker Solar Probe will carry 1,137,202 submitted and confirmed names on its journey to the sun. Submissions open on March 6, 2018 and closed on April 27 at 11.59 p.m. EDT. A chip containing the names will be installed onto the spacecraft before launch. Um, why? So, what do you want to do this for? So you can tell your grandson, you know, little Robbie, I once sent my name to the sun. Oh, that's cool, Grandpa. I mean, is that what the devil asked for? Send me one million souls and I'll let you pass. I hope none of you were involved in this sun worship. Now the spacecraft did stop short at about 
3.83 million miles from the actual surface of the sun. The outer atmosphere, which is close enough, and may be far enough away to work, but I'm still not buying it. However, however, there is something. This spacecraft has a camera called Whisper. This comes from Universe Today. Parker Solar Probe captured images of Venus on its way to the Sun. Last summer, the Parker Solar Probe flew past Venus on its way to fly closer to the Sun. In a bit of a surprise, one of the spacecraft's cameras, the Wide Field Imager for a Parker Solar Probe, or WHISPER, captured a striking image of the planet's night side from 7,693 miles away. The surprise of the image was that Whisper, a visible light camera, seemingly captured the Venus's surface in infrared light. Hmm, how did it do that? Given the timing of this event, I wouldn't be surprised if they are trying to get images of something other than the sun. And I think that if we keep an eye on the sun from now until after the holidays, we may get to see something very interesting occur. These people like to future fake. They tell you things that make you believe that there is all the time to spare to keep looking forward to future missions of all sorts. When the reality is, all this stuff may come to a ceasing halt before enough of us had had the chance to wake up to it. There is more to come, more to explore. We can pick on NASA another time. They have the science to show us if you want to get a deeper look into the technical aspects of this mission. I just like to poke fun at how strange and unusual things like this are. Just, what's the word? Unbelievable. Be sure to visit woodwardentertainment.com and the Woodward Entertainment Store. You can follow me on Instagram at jwoodward. And until next time, friends, as always, stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.